of a you know for, for a good five years. In Ireland, it's much smaller. Well, you were telling me that you you've noticed a difference between Northern Ireland and, and Ireland. Yeah. Uh, I guess. Yeah. I was gonna say the mainland, but that doesn't quite work. But yeah. Ireland, which is south, um, in terms of the development of the blogosphere, it's actually been more developed. You've noticed in Northern Ireland, or yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think so. Why uh, is that? I mean, I'm because because here's the great thing that America and Britain have. You have polarization. Polarization gives people a motive to get into the battle. Right. Because there are clear dividing lines between Republicans and Democrats. Right. Or Labour Party and Conservative Party in right. Britain. In the Republic, there are no clear ideological lines. Right. I could rehearse the names. I mean, Fianna Fáil... Seriously, what do you mean? People are just generally support one party and that's it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And, and, and each party's platform is a populist platform and deeply pragmatic, huh. post-ideological. Uh, so there are no clean policy lines that would huh. divide one, get one party from another party. Right. It's tradition. Oh, that's, oh, that's okay. Um, and the tradition arises but, but it's from not the as, of uh, yeah. the island. But it is not as polarized, you mean, you're saying, as, as another... No. Well, okay, Northern Ireland is obviously very polarized just because of the conflict, but... No, the political conflict I mean, has no ideological content, that's what I mean. So you don't have the means of polarizing them. Oh, uh, I see, I'm sorry, yeah. okay, okay, uh, no, okay. No, the, the financial crisis okay. is polarizing people, but it's mostly about disaffection. Okay. With, you know, it, it is a version of kick the bums out. Huh, okay. But since, since you started in 2002, though, did you... Our blogosphere is bigger, but we're a much larger country. Your starting in 2002 is interesting to me, since really we started in 2000, I would argue. I mean, maybe there were some blogs before. I mean, I even wrote some things in 1998 that now would be considered a blog, but yeah. back then you didn't call it that. But Andrew Sullivan's is really the first big blog that I can think of, like yeah. I said, which is 2000. Yeah. So if you were 2002, that's pretty damn early. Uh, I've always been curious sort of whether, whether, you know, England, Ireland, that whole area, whether you guys are really that much further, that much behind us in terms of blogging. I know on the continent they are behind us. Yeah. They're catching up fast, yeah. but they're still behind us in terms of the blogging yeah. phenomenon, whereas England I never was never, or UK I was never quite too sure. No, no, I think, well... Even though it's smaller, uh, but that's it obvious. It has ca caught up. I mean, the last general election in the UK was in May 2005. Right. And it was a very... It wasn't even collegial. It was. It, there was barely a conversation going on between bloggers. Now it's massive, and, and you've seen big, wealthy businessmen actually invest in in political websites like Conservative Home. Right. And you've seen the Labour Party start to kind of move in with right. things like Labour List, and you know. Is the uh, media uh, getting into blogging in in uh, the UK? Yeah, big time. Big or time. Ireland, yeah, yeah, either yeah, place. No, I but mean, I, I I did two years working with the Daily Telegraph trying to get their blogging efforts. Oh, okay, kind of okay. So like here then. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. So they're trying to get there. The, the, their big problem is actually individuals work faster and smarter than than institutions do. So they're so. still. They're still not really where it's at. Some okay. of them, some of them, and some some journalists get it. Some journalists don't. Well, similar to here, of course. Yeah. yeah. Now, you know, to get off the blogging for a second, I had asked you, which I, I was afraid it was a dumb question, but it was interesting because apparently by your answer, it wasn't as dumb as I thought. I was asking if if you as Northern Irish of Irish uh, ethnicity, if we call it that, or Irish blood, uh, if you felt Irish, Northern Irish, okay. British, or what? What one, what, what somebody like you actually feels, and whether that was a dumb question or not. Well, I mean, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier on, Catholic Protestant. The, the, the religion is not a cause of the conflict, but it's, a, but it is a significant and residual marker okay. in, pe in people's cultural, uh, cultural identity. Right. I'm Catholic, and a, a writer called Ruth Dudley Edwards once once put it very very succinctly and very perfectly. It is like Southern Europe and Northern Europe living cheek by jowl, one okay. village beside the next village. Right. So the cult the culture mores are different, the outlook is different. And you were even telling me people even practice different sports based on their religion? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But yeah. And, and it's and it's not just part of the country. It literally you could be living in the same city and if you're Catholic you practice same some time. sports, if you're Protestant, you practice Absolutely. different. Absolutely. It's just the way you're brought up. I mean, I, I'm Catholic. Grew up in a Protestant town. Um, no, there was never any chance of me playing cricket. No, there are Catholics in Hollywood who do play cricket, and some of them even went on. But that generally was their their father's obsession, and they followed. They okay. followed something to do with the family. But generally, Catholics don't play cricket. They don't play rugby in the north. In the south, right. of course, they do. But it's it, it, in the south doesn't have the same cultural. Okay, right, we right, have. right. Yeah, but you would follow Gaelic football. And, and by, by the south, you mean Ireland. Yes. That, that's what you call. Okay, just checking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but so you'd follow Gaelic football or soccer. Right. Both, 
both communities play soccer, right? And accordingly, it's a bit of a sectarian scrum. Well, because that's considered more international or whatever, probably. Yeah. Just it's a more popular Barely. sport. Okay. It was even at the time of partition. Right. Right. Um, God, I'm not sure what are you, I know. The last thing I was going to ask you because it was funny when you brought it up because um, uh, Joe mentioned we were at dinner earlier. The, uh, the you're having your own uh, sort of Catholic cardinal sex scandal in Ireland that we reported on a while ago because it's been going on for a while now. Um, what? Give our readers sort of a summary of what that is. I mean, I know we linked again. I can pull up the link too. I can try to. But what's going on? You said that there's. Uh, I mean, the Cardinals in really some deep trouble now. Yeah. Yeah. What's the story in well, a I mean, nutshell? The, the background is there's been a number of reports. One of them uh, was a government report on the very deep uh, in water. That's what we reported on. There was a big government. A recent. There was a big government okay. report. This is about a year or two ago. Okay. And then um, late last year there was a, a church report. That's on the, the one we knew about, maybe. Yeah. Of Dublin, right. And that kicked up a lot of detail, a lot of compromising detail about auxiliary bishops that were, that were in, in place in Dublin, who then subsequently went on to become bishops, bishops right. el elsewhere. And famously, we had who what who basically had had committed abuse, but were no, not the, or, or, or who knew about it. Was it. The, it was the cover up afterwards. Okay, what okay, was the cover up? okay. These guys were not guilty of child abuse, but they were ah. guilty of. Covering up and the then plan. they and then they moved up to higher levels of the church, yes. and fa and, and like famously. a famous Catholic we know who resides in Rome. Yes, um, <laughs> yeah. I shan't be talking about that. that <laughs> okay. just, yeah, but I mean, okay. just sticking to the sticking to the yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the Bishop of Limerick right. fought and fought and fought against resignation, and in the end, had to. And we're we're at a kind of a the story broke on Sunday, and and the the word is. Or the expectation is even the cardinal. Uh, the cardinal may have to go. I'm not the Catholic. Are bishops of cities and the cardinals of the whole region, or how does that work? I don't understand. Cardinals are appointed by the pope. It's a special privilege. Okay. Uh, so you, technically speaking, you might have a whole country that doesn't have a cardinal. Okay. It's, it's a prerogative. Of, it's a, it's a prerogative of right. the uh, the pope. But is there a so is the highest Catholic official in Ireland a cardinal? Yes. yes okay. And the yes. bishops you have for different regions or cities or something. Yeah, and that's, okay. that, they're part okay. of the administration thing, but the cardinals okay. are significant, significant because they form the electoral right. college that elects. So them. your cardinal is in serious trouble. He's in very serious because trouble because he had overseen a number of these investigations he, or whatever and and covered them up. And and he he ended up negotiating. Uh, I, I can't I can't just recall what the word is. Right. But an agreement with the victim that the victim would not would not yeah, yeah, pursue, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. pursue it any further either, either through church law or through secular right. law. Which I mean, it's amazing to me because I, he's I've morally yeah. compromised. He, right. he's, he's now trying to make the argument, or people are making the argument on his behalf, that he was legally covered by it. But morally, <laughs> yeah, a church leader, right? A church leader arguing the letter of the law, exactly. Well, what was interesting to me is, at least with the American scandals over the last decade or however long it's been, there's always been talk from the church in Rome about how, ah, well, it's an American scandal, yeah. and they always it. it it frankly, you know, it, it reminds me of um, Africa talking about homosexuality and the same thing. They talk about that it's, it's a Western disease, a Western problem, you know, that doesn't exist in Africa. It's only kind of a similar thing, that this pedophile scandal was somehow some American thing, and now clearly in Ireland it's become a big deal. I know in Germany, too, uh, another blogger on our, on our gay site's written deal. a lot about it, too. And, uh, but here's the thing. There's only been one of these investigations in one arch, arch you, you mean the church's own investigation? Yes. Why, why was and it trustworthy? nothing happening in the north. Why, did we, why was the, the church do such a good investigation? Investigation. I would have worried that the church would have done a bad investigation of itself. Because the current Archbishop of Dublin is determined to get to the bottom of it and, ah, clean, okay. and clean things out. And, oh, good, and okay. Fair play to him. Right, okay. But there's a reluctance in, in other dioceses and archdioceses to get into this. And right. what this tells us is, in the Diocese of Kilmore, where the current Cardinal was a, was a junior church official at the time, there's clearly there, there are clear, clearly problems, right, right. And, and there is no appetite amongst other bishops to really get down and clean this out. Right. Personally, if the church is, has got to have a future, it really has to face its own right. demons. Um, you know, let me go back real quick, and then we'll probably cut this off. I'll, I mean, I'll divide this in two if I have to on YouTube, <laughs> um, just because I, I don't want to stick with just sort of Irish politics for, for yeah, the yeah. Americans. But um, you, what's your? I, I know my readers always ask me this when I go abroad that I should ask these questions. What's your impression of President Obama? And has it changed at all that you've been here and talked to a lot of people? Although people may be careful what they say to you guys because you're a collection of journalists, so I don't know. But well, let me go back to the campaign. The, 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 I was not one of those people during the campaign who was directly affected by his charisma. Um, 
I'm not pretending that I'm clever. It's kind of a default position I take on virtually anything about that. Uh, and charisma is one thing. 